holy pentacles from the Key of Solomon are ancient and mysterious artifacts with an intriguing allure. Their origins can be traced back to the Renaissance era grimoire called the Key of Solomon. Within the pages of this weathered book is a wealth of wisdom and intricate rituals, unveiling a complex and fascinating ancient magical system. Exploring this early text reveals a world of hidden secrets and esoteric knowledge. In contemporary magic, many practitioners, myself included, have adopted an approach that involves working with the pentacles independently from the intricate rituals outlined in the actual grimoire, the Key of Solomon. I work with the Holy Pentacles of Solomon within the angel magic system I practice, and I will share this practice with you. I have included all the information you need to use the Pentacles of Solomon effectively in this little booklet. These sacred seals filled with ancient wisdom and centuries of magical use can profoundly change your life, whether you seek healing, protection, abundance, love, manifestation, or spiritual growth, these symbols can help you to achieve it. This booklet contains detailed descriptions and traditional uses for each seal. By studying these descriptions, you can better understand the powers that each pentacle represents. It's important to note that these seals have unlimited potential beyond the specific purposes listed for each one. They can help you in accessing countless possibilities and can be utilized in ways only limited by your imagination and intention. So just to reiterate, the traditional uses of the pentacles are good to read, to give you a glance into what the attitude of the pentacle is, and then you can use that to inform your use of those. So even if the use isn't exactly what is stated in the description, you can get an idea if it seems to be the right pentacle for you. The Teaching Angels and the Pentacles these special pentacles, also known as the Holy Pentacles, were allegedly crafted and blessed by the angelic forces who govern the seven planets corresponding to the days of the week. Each planet's angel has a unique sphere of influence encompassing various aspects of life and existence. Selecting the appropriate angel to work with is essential as they each guide and assist in harnessing the specific energies associated with their planet. We can tap into this angelic power by aligning ourselves with these divine forces to transform our lives. When working with the power of planetary angel magic, it is essential to establish a solid connection with the teaching angel that aligns with your specific need or desire. By invoking the right angel for each assistance area, you ensure that your sacred rituals are in harmony with the celestial energies that open you up to their profound cosmic powers. For instance, if your business needs to be blessed with more success, you might ask Mikael of the Sun who governs business success. If your relationship needs to be blessed with harmony, you would likely work with Anael of Venus who rules relationships, love, partnerships, etc. And you want to try to do your best to align yourself with the angel of the planet that best rules your desire or your goal or your problem. Timing your spells. Planning and performing your magical operations on the specific day of the week ruled by the corresponding angel is vital to establishing the connection and synergy between you and the angelic forces you desire to contact. This amplifies the potency and success of your magical work. If you cannot perform your entire spell on the correct day, you can begin with a small task on the designated day and complete the remaining steps within seven days on any day or hour that suits your schedule. For instance, you might cut the square for your pentacle on the designated day and continue the remaining steps on a later day. Alternatively, if you can't work on the correct day, you can perform your magic on a Wednesday during the hour of the angel you want to work with. Wednesday is governed by Mercury, and its angel Raphael, who's known as the messenger, can connect you with any angelic energy required for any situation. If you choose to work on any day other than the angel's own day, selecting the correct angelic hour corresponding to the angel you're invoking is crucial. So if you decide to work on Wednesday, make sure that you work in the angel's hour. 
you could technically work on any day that is compatible with your angel. And to get all of that information, you'll want to take my basic angel magic course. Otherwise, for the simplicity of this particular system that we're working with today, instead of going into all of that, if you don't know about the compatible days, either work on the day of the week of your angel or work on a Wednesday in their hour. The lunar cycle. You can quickly locate the times of the full moon and the new moon on calendars. However, it's worth noting that what is labeled as the new moon on calendars is termed the dark moon by many magical practitioners. In traditions like Solomonic and angel magic, it is customary to refrain from practicing magic during this dark moon phase. In these magic traditions, the new moon refers to when a visible crescent can be observed in the sky. Thus, the new moon always occurs at least one day after what is indicated as a new moon on a calendar. To err on the side of caution, it's advisable to perform new moon magic at least one day after what is referred to as the new moon in standard calendars. The period of two weeks between the dark moon and the full moon is commonly referred to as the waxing phase because we observe the moon waxing or growing larger. Conversely, the two weeks between the full moon and the dark moon is known as the waning phase, as it is when we witness the moon gradually decreasing in size each night. During the waxing phase, focus on magic that involves attracting things or promoting growth. On the other hand, the waning phase is best suited for intentions aimed at eliminating or removing elements from our lives. To perform new moon magic, select the first day of the week after the new moon that corresponds to the angel you want to invoke. For waning moon magic, choose the first day following the full moon governed by the angel you wish to call upon. The Seven Teaching Angels In angel magic, the planetary pentacles are linked to their corresponding archangel. While other angels and spirits may be mentioned in the pentacles, those are under the direction of the archangel. This means that we don't need to communicate with other beings, as they are under the archangel's authority. This systematic approach ensures a smooth and effective magical practice. When choosing a pentacle of Solomon to use, it is highly beneficial to carefully examine the detailed descriptions of the seals associated with the ruling planet that align with your desired outcome. Choose the seal that resonates harmoniously with the specific energy you want to infuse into your spell. Focus more on what you perceive to be the seal's attitude rather than being overly concerned if the particular purposes mentioned in the descriptions differ from your intentions. Rest assured, any seal connected to the angel's governing planet can be used for matters within its sphere of influence, so there's no need to worry about making the wrong choice. And I probably should have mentioned in the text that seal pentacle, talisman, all are synonymous in this particular text. So when it's talking about the seals, it's talking about the pentacles. So if you notice that one planet has seven different pentacles, then you can choose any of those pentacles to work with that archangel, any of them. But if you go through each of them and you see what they are traditionally used for, you can fine tune things and see which attitude best suits your particular spell. But all of those pentacles are under the same archangel. All of the pentacles of the sun are under Mikael. All of the pentacles of the moon are under Gabriel, etc. So you don't have to worry if you make a wrong choice because it's still going to get you where you want to go. It's just that you can start to deepen your practice and fine tune your methods. Personalizing your pentacles. The simplest method of working magic with a Solomon pentacle is printing, cutting it out, and writing a petition on the back. So you can just take this book, print out the, the seals, print out the pentacles, choose one that you want to work with, cut it out, write your petition in, your, in English on the back in a regular ballpoint pen, and that's it. That's all you have to do. So that's the simplest way of doing it. However, as you work within this system, you may desire to deepen your practice. There are many different ways to establish a stronger bond with a pentacle. One of the easiest methods is to personalize your pentacle by printing it out and then coloring it using crayons, pens, colored pencils, or paints. Angels are associated with specific colors, and using their colors in combination with contrasting and harmonious colors can create a very potent pentacle for you. You could also draw the pentacle from scratch using a compass, ruler, protractor. 
You could also trace the pentacle, like you put a piece of tracing paper over the pentacle after you print it out and trace it yourself, and then transfer that traced pentacle onto a, another sheet of paper. You could print it out in gray and trace over the gray lines using ink, paint, pencil, or other medium. So there's all kinds of ways that you can personalize your pentacle and put more work into it rather than just printing it out and writing a petition. But you might want to just start out with printing it out and writing a petition, just get your feet wet. Personalizing pentacles in a way that works best for you is crucial. You don't have to worry if you think that you lack artistic ability. Mo you've seen mine. I'm, they're not great works of art, <laughs> but they work. Most people find that creating a hand-drawn, traced, or colored pentacle is much more potent than using a plain printed one because of the extra attention they give it. Traditionally, it's common to sprinkle your pinnacle with salt water and wave it through incense before charging it under a white candle or a candle in the color associated with the angel that is on top of the pinnacle. If you do that, you want to, while the candle burns, focus your energy and intention on the pinnacle and let that candle burn down and out all by itself. If you decide to use an LED candle, just leave it on the talisman for an hour or more to achieve the same effect as letting the regular candle burn down and out. You could use an alcohol-based eau de cologne, such as Florida water or 4711, instead of using the salt water or burning incense, and that's what I tend to do. You could anoint your pentacle with perfume, and there are specific perfumes that are associated with each angel, but you can also use any scent that you feel resonates with that angel that you're calling upon. You just need to spray the pentacle with it or apply a few drops or, or anoint it with your finger if you're using oil to perfume your pentacle. Now, if for any reason you can't do any of these extra rituals, don't worry. Just creating the talisman is often ritual enough. We say that the angels underwrite our efforts, and the more effort we put into it, the more the angels have to work with for our benefit. Trusting their guidance always leads to success. We must always strive to do our best and have faith in the angels' assistance on our journey. Faith in our Creator enables us to use these pentacles freely for manifestation, for protection, and for help calling on assistance from those teaching angels. What if you make a mistake? It is vital to put in your best efforts when creating talismans and seeking the assistance of angels, but do not worry if you make mistakes. They are a natural part of the learning process. The angels understand our intentions and our desires and are not here to punish us for errors. Their role is to guide us and to support us in pursuing success and fulfillment in all aspects of our lives. It's essential to remember that our Creator loves us and the presence of angels serves as a reminder of that divine love and connection. The power of angel magic cannot cause harm. However, if used recklessly or arrogantly, the angels may take some firm action to help alert you to that fact. And what the angels might consider a gentle little nudge can give us a fresh understanding of the concept called the, quote, fear of God. It's essential to note that while the teaching angels are benevolent beings, they should never be taken for granted. They serve as guardians, guiding us on our path with their powerful interventions, which sometimes can be not so subtle. Making mistakes is entirely normal and we learn from them. What's important is keeping our hearts in the right place and doing our best. Why work with angels? Angel magic is a fascinating mystical practice that allows us to seek help from divine celestial forces to heal any out of order conditions. The angels loving guidance and assistance teach us to tap into our inherent power to be, do or have whatever we desire. By connecting with these powerful beings, we receive divine guidance, wisdom, and support to help us overcome challenges, navigate difficult situations, and manifest our deepest desires. The role of angels is not to grant our wishes, but to teach us and to guide us. Instead of giving them a list of things that we want, we ask for their guidance and assistance in showing us how to manifest our own goals and to heal adverse situations for ourselves. When we ask angels for material possessions or other things, what we are truly seeking is their guidance to help us access our inner strength and power so that we can achieve those goals ourselves. 
angels can assist us in discovering our inner power and can teach us where to find it and to access it, allowing us to accomplish great things that we never had thought were possible. Learning is the key to overcoming challenges and achieving success. It is crucial to comprehensively understand any situation we are working on. Teaching angels can help us gain this understanding and free us from fear and ignorance, which can hold us back from experiencing true magic. Using petitions and talismans as described in this booklet, we initiate communication with the angels about any situation and seek their guidance. They will respond to us through things happening in our lives, through our intuition, guiding us when making decisions, and by sending us signs and omens and clues. By approaching angels with respect and humility, we can tap into our holy inheritance and live life that we are destined to lead. So you got to really rethink what magic means when you're dealing with angels. It's not like ordering spirits to do this or do that. It's not like going onto Instacart and ordering a bunch of things. Angels aren't there to do that. That's not their role. Their role is to help us to find our power because angels already know that whatever we desire or require is our inheritance and it's us that is holding it up. We are the ones that don't know how to access our power. That's what they're there to do is to show us where to find these things ourselves. If they were to just grant us things, then they would be doubling down on illusion. They're not going to do that. If they just grant you things, then you think, oh, I have to go outside of myself to get things. And they're saying, no, you have an inheritance. All of this is available to you. Let's show you how to find it. And that's much more powerful. The angelic scripts. When writing a petition, you can either write it on the back of the talisman or you can write it on a separate piece of paper and then set the talisman on top of the petition. Writing your petition in your native language is a very powerful method, and it's usually the best way to begin your practice. As you progress, however, you may find that using magical scripts to write your petitions can significantly impact your results. There are numerous benefits to utilizing ancient scripts when communicating with angels. Firstly, these scripts have been used for centuries meaning a great deal of Akashic energy has accumulated around them. This energy is readily available for your use, and these scripts are a way to access that energy. Secondly, the fact that these scripts are believed to have magical powers gives them magical feel to all of your operations. The feelings themselves are the most essential part of any magical operation. We want the very air to crackle with power when we are working our magic. Also, a magical script requires careful consideration and concise writing. Some scripts are phonetic, meaning that you must sound out your desire, sometimes multiple times. All this helps to reinforce the spell, planting it more deeply in the fertile ground of your mind. While using these scripts may require some practice, it is worth incorporating them into your magic. However, it's essential to note that these scripts are not mandatory for performing magic or communicating with angels. Don't think that you should wait to seek the help of the angels until you have mastered these scripts. Instead, start writing petitions in your native language and add the scripts later as you gradually build your practice. Embracing the Magic of the Angels it's important to understand that the teaching angels do not require us to use magical scripts and rituals or use particular days, hours, or magical pentacles to help us. According to angelic lore, these tools were given to us in order to align our minds with their frequencies. As we progress in our practice, we can rely more on our established connection with the angels and less on the tools. However, it would be wise to deepen our connection with the teaching angels by utilizing their ancient and sacred techniques rather than trying to bypass them immediately. Their wisdom will guide us on our path of growth and enlightenment. Sometimes when we ask for help, angels will put us to the test. However, they don't do this to test our worth or our sincerity but rather to encourage us to become actively involved in solving our problems with them. The story of Jacob wrestling with an angel and refusing to let go until receiving a blessing is a beautiful image. But it's important to understand that the angel was never in danger of being overpowered by Jacob. 
right? It wasn't like Jacob was going to hurt the angel. Let's use this image to teach us that angels can be like sparring partners or personal trainers, guiding us, inspiring us, coaching us to overcome struggles and to achieve desires. Angels guide us to discover the answers within ourselves. They illuminate our path and lead us toward strength and wisdom to overcome all challenges and to achieve greatness. The teaching angels surround us with their love and care even when we are not actively engaged in angelic magic. Our bond with them provides a beautiful pathway to seek their guidance and assistance. Through this sacred bond, we find encouragement, support, and the assurance that we are never alone and that all things are possible through the Elohim. Connecting with angels and utilizing their guidance is a continuous journey. It requires patience, dedication, and a willingness to learn and grow. As we develop a deeper connection with the teaching angels, we also learn to understand ourselves and our purpose here. You can check out my free course called Basic Angel Magic. How to Use the Pentacles of Solomon This booklet contains all 44 Pentacles of Solomon. To use these pentacles, just follow these simple steps. Create the pentacle using your preferred method. Either pr- just print it out, or print it out and then color it, or you can draw it, you can trace it, whatever you like. Just create the pentacle first. Then write a petition. To do that, you can use either the reverse side of the pentacle or a separate piece of paper and then place the pentacle on top of it. You may use your native language or one of the sacred scripts for writing the petitions. Begin by addressing the angel. You would just say, Dear angel so-and-so, and then state your petition, and then finally sign your name at the bottom. After creating the pentacle during the waning moon to eliminate something, sit and gaze at the pentacle and feel whatever you desire to eliminate as being completely dissolved. You feel free of it. Feel the relief and the lightness of this problem being removed. If any prayers or psalms are used in the talisman itself, reflect on them and repeat them silently or aloud. After a few minutes, just rip up the pentacle into several pieces and throw it away. Now, a lot of people say that they like to burn it. You can, there's no no rule that you can't burn it, but don't think that burning it is somehow more powerful. You can destroy it any way that you like. And if you really love to burn things, go for it. You can burn it, but ripping it up and throwing it away is just as powerful. After creating a pentacle during the waxing moon, Take some time to sit and gaze at it while you visualize your desire manifesting into reality. If the pentacle includes psalms or prayers, reflect on those and repeat them silently or aloud. Store the pentacle in a safe place and take it out once or twice a day to gaze at it while you reflect on your desire and imagine it coming to fruition easily and quickly. Once the full moon has passed, leave the talisman hidden. Don't take it out every day anymore. Just forget about it. Forget about the spell entirely during that two-week waning cycle. And then finally, on the new moon, take the pentacle out and tear it into several pieces and dispose of it. If you have used a separate piece of paper for your petition, just rip that up right along with the pentacle and dispose of both of them together. Only repeat a spell for the same thing if at least three new moons have passed and no signs of results are seen. If you do not see any signs of results, though, it may be that the angels are trying to tell you something. Your approach may need to be rethought entirely. As previously stated, working your magic on the day of the week ruled by the angel with whom you wish to work is recommended. If you can't work on the day ruled by the angel, Wednesday is a good alternative as it is compatible with any angel. However, if you do need to work on a day that the angel does not govern, work your magic during the hour of that specific angel. The system of angelic hours in this guide is based on local clock time and remains consistent each day of the week, differing from many other systems of planetary hours, including that in the Key of Solomon. The list of angelic hours shows three hours, 6 p.m., 2 a.m., and 10 a.m., that are not assigned to an angel. These special hours are devoted to the angel Uriel, who holds a distinct position beyond the seven planetary rulers discussed in this booklet, and to whom no pentacles of Solomon are dedicated. Those are three hours that just are not associated with an angel in this system. The Angelic Scripts 
The cipher scripts are much simpler to work with than the phonetic scripts. Instead of converting your petition first to phonetics, you exchange each letter with its corresponding letter in the magical script. The phonetic scripts require that you convert your petitions into phonetics before converting them to the script. Don't worry if the phonetics aren't perfect. Just do your best and all will be well. All the scripts are written from left to right except for the Asherah script, and this one is always written from right to left. Therefore, when you convert your petitions into phonetics, it's helpful to do so from right to left. If you struggle with specific scripts during your magical practice, remember that two universal scripts can be used with any angel, Theban and Passing the Rivers. Most people find this Theban script is very easy to use and can be a good starting point for beginners in magical scripts. Passing the Rivers is a phonetic script that can be a good second choice before exploring the other angelic scripts since it is universal. However, it's always acceptable to write your petitions in your native language without using any magical scripts. You may find it advantageous to print the pages of this booklet containing those scripts to make it easier for you to work with them. Psalms in the Solomon Pentacles. The Psalms have a significant role in Pauline magic, period, whether used with Solomon Pentacles or not. The Psalms are a treasure trove of magic seeds that replenish themselves. It's wise to work with any Psalm mentioned in a Pentacle if you are working with that Pentacle. Don't limit yourself to the individual verses used in the Pentacle. Work the entire Psalm. If you want to learn more about how to work Psalm magic, you can refer to my free booklet called How to Work Psalm Magic. The 44 pentacles of the Greater Key of Solomon are believed to possess deep spiritual power. Practitioners have used them for centuries for protection, healing, prosperity, fulfillment, and enlightenment. These symbols can help uncover secrets of transformation and divine connection, serving as guiding lights for those seeking a deep and transformative bond with the divine realms. Symbols have always fascinated us on a spiritual level, transcending time and space. Their simple elegance conveys profound ideas that resonate with us. I have included all 44 pentacles of Solomon, meticulously crafted symbols holding immense power and wisdom. These divine sigils create a magnificent tapestry woven with symbols from different traditions. As we explore this mystical mosaic, we are invited to turn within and unravel the threads that connect us to the ancient angelic realms. Each symbol represents a spiritual force that guides us, drawing from the wisdom of ancient traditions and divine whispers. The Pentacles of Solomon serve as gateways to self-discovery, offering profound insights about ourselves and the world through deep contemplation. These sacred seals of Solomon act as powerful conduits connecting the unseen and the seen realms, enabling meaningful communication between those two worlds. Let the Pentacles of Solomon light your path, bringing divine illumination to the realms of spiritual understanding and self-discovery. Allow the teaching angels you call upon through these talismans to guide your thoughts and actions. May the spiritual awakening they incite lead you to a place of transcendent understanding, inner harmony, and boundless love. Included here are all the Pentacles, one set in black and one set in gray. The black ones are suitable for simply coloring or as references for when you're drawing a pentacle. The gray ones are ideal for drawing over each symbol and letter, tracing the gray lines with ink, paint, or other media. May you find eternal magic, joy, happiness, peace, prosperity, and all forms of success with this ancient system of magic. Blessed be.